We're doing a little follow-up video on the Cincinnati drill press. So here's me powering up the drill press. We take our protective dust shield off of there. It blipped 110 volts for a second. If you saw the first video, you know we installed a variable frequency inverter to power up a three-phase motor off a regular single-phase outlet. I had never done it before, and we got a couple really good comments on that video. After doing some further research, we got this set up exactly the way I wanted it. I'm actually very impressed with this Tico inverter. So originally I thought you could have like an e-stop before the inverter to power it off, but that's a big no-no. I had an e-stop switch that's actually controlled by the inverter, and it's uh, hooked up on these front screws here. And one thing I did with the addition of this e-stop switch is I took this off of here so there'd be no confusion and that's working great so initially we had a very slow ramp up and slow ramp down for running this and shutting it off but totally adjustable we got the ramp up at 0.1 second and then the ramp off is uh, set to coast the idea there is we're not dwelling in the low frequency range that could possibly damage the motor so we're going to demonstrate that here <laughs> Got the pot working on the front. You can slow the spindle RPM down. And we got the e-stop set with, uh, I believe it's some DC braking action to bring that spindle to a quick stop. I'll demonstrate that. goes to ES until you reset it. This can't be good for it. Hopefully we don't have to hit that very often. I think that's going to be about the end of it right there. We've added a 14 end ball bearing chuck to it, Jacobs. Nice piece, goes from zero to half inch, and it's real big so you can get clamping force on it with uh, a big key. And here's shutting down the drill press. It's low voltage for a second. Definitely some capacitors or something in there. So thanks for the comments, you got us pointed in the right direction, and we'll see you on the next one.